Hey guys, welcome back to Everlast YouTube channel. I'm Brian Legalio. Uh, you saw the last video of us getting to do some dual shield flux core on some fillet welds and dialed in the, the Cyclone 312. And I wanna see what it'll do on some industrial applications. So we're gonna run a D1.1 test. It's a 22 and a half degree bevel. And we're gonna see if we can emulate um, heavy industrial applications with this machine and 045 dual shield flex core. So this is a six inch plate beveled at a 22 and a half degree bevel that would satisfy D1.1. Only thing that doesn't satisfy is we need runoff tabs. Um, on a six inch plate, we need a inch each side of running tabs. I don't have that, but we're gonna work with what we have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a about a quarter inch gap in between my, uh, my beveled plates here, and I'm gonna tack it up on the backing strip. We're gonna run it out as a multi-pass weld and see how it goes. The settings we found to run really good on these wire was 25 and 300. I don't typically like running that low in a flat or horizontal position, but we're gonna give it a try on this coupon and see how it goes. Um, usually need to be up a little bit higher on it, but this machine seems to be putting out pretty good amount of power at this setting right here. I like it, so I'm gonna stay with it. And if I need to adjust, because now we have more mass with 3 8 uh, plate being six inches long and six inches wide, or four inches wide, excuse me, uh, that we may turn it up. But I'm gonna start off right there at 25 and 300. All right, so I have my uh, my specimen all tacked up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my root pass on a D1.1 uh, procedure test. Your hold points are tack up, root final. So what happens is now that it's tacked up, if this was a testing scenario, a CWI would come over and make sure I'm within procedure. Give me the okay or not okay. If he okayed it, then I can throw the root in. He's gonna look at the root, make sure it's within procedure, and then look at the final um, result after the root. Um, I'm about to start my root. What I'm gonna make sure is I have a three quarter inch stick out, five eighths to three quarter inch stick out contact to work distance, as my buddy Jason likes to say. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little side to side oscillation and make sure I tie in both sides of the wall. And it should be pretty uh, pretty simple, straightforward. I'm gonna also keep that drag angle since I'm gonna do it in the 1G position. So while I'm, I'm putting this root in, I'm trying to make oscillate back and forth to make sure that I'm tying into both bevels. Making sure that I have complete fusion because this is one of the most, uh, when we go to the destructive testing, this is one of the most important parts of your weld. I don't have size, I have a one chance to make sure that this weld punches in to the both the bellows to make sure that we have proper fusion. While doing the root here, you don't want to spend any time in the middle. You wanna watch, watch your puddle wash over to each side and continuously to move forward while the puddle washes into each bevel. I'm able to achieve bevel to bevel coverage by just doing a slight oscillation with a continuous move forward. When I start, I because I don't have a backing ship, I have to start on the bevel. And I'm gonna go side to side and let it try to build up. Um, as I'm going, I'm oscillating side to side and making sure that my bead is flowing into and tying into each bevel wall equally. Um, you'll see I'm, I'm on a tab and slot table. So you'll see me get hung up and like, jump a little bit, but that's all right. This puddle's fluid. It has a lot of uh, like, uh, cushion of air into it. So long as I keep a drag angle, keep my contact distance checked, you know, I, as I'm going, I have to keep reevaluating where my contact is. So I'm gonna keep making those adjustments and I'm gonna read the puddle and make adjustments on the fly as needed. When I, when I get to the end, because I do not have a uh, runoff tab yet again, I'm gonna kind of do like a little circle, kind of make sure it's not concave. I want uh, I want a convex profile on the end there, or as much as I can do it without blowing out the base metal. All right, so we did a second pass here. This is, you know, generically called a hot pass, which is would probably be an improper term with it, being the nature of what we do, but that is how it's referred to. I also, with this pass, I went side to side, kind of like I did it with the root, just slightly wider. But this is as wide as I ever take a stringer. I never go wider than this right now, but I wanted it flat and I wanted it tied into the, uh, the walls properly. All right, so after this, I'm gonna just stringer it. I'm gonna run two more fills and two for the cap. We'll see you when we're done. 
So I finished out the plate, and this is the common problem if you don't use your runoff tabs, is I have a little bit of concaveness there. If I had a runoff tab, it, it would have been fine. Um, so when you do these uh, welds, and see how I'm a little, little low right there? Um, that's why we have runoff tabs, is so we don't have these highs and low spots in our weld zone. Now, technically the D11, first inch and last inch is all scrap, so technically I'm right, but that is still up to the CWI's discretion if they want to QC this whole plate. I would not advise doing it like this, but in this circumstance, this is what I had to work with. Um, this is, took me roughly, root, uh, hot pass, two fills and two caps to get this plate above flush, but not over an eighth. That's dual shield flux core in my home shop doing a D1.1 D1 procedure, uh, that's AWS structural steel procedure, on a Cyclone 312 at home. I can do code work at home with this machine and not wire. So that's what I got to show you guys today. Um, weld me and weld green. Have a good one. The, why are outros so awkward? Oh, still, huh?